months ahead of time. It's going to arrive in the mail. Here it is. Problem solved. Big mountain flattened. On the other hand, if you say, well, I'm, I know it's here. Yeah, sounds, sounds easy. Now, if on the other hand you say, well, actually, I'm going to take Medicare at 65, but I'm going to wait to 66 or later to get my full social security. <laughs> now, you have to have a word with social security. You've got to tell them what you're up to. Now, you can always go in to the social security office. Good luck. You know, if you're going to do that, if you're going to do that, if you're proactive and you've got this three-month window that you, you, know, you can use, phone them up. Make an appointment. Go in, at least that way you know you've got a time scheduled, you're not going to be in line. The easier way is to go online, anytime, day or night. Socialsecurity.gov. And you, you, you can go to socialsecurity.gov or medicare.gov. If you go to socialsecurity.gov, home page, on the top right hand side, it's going to say sign in, sign up. You sign up and you create an account. You know, they used to send you the old social security things in the mail every year as of such and such. You know, if you keep working like this forever and a day, you'll get so much social security. Well, the, the way, you know, the, the, to, to view that would be to go in and set up an account. And you can go in and monitor that. So some of you may have already done that. Idea again is, if you haven't, you go to socialsecurity.gov, sign up, create an account, when? Up to three months ahead of time, and you tell Social Security, this is me. I do, do not want Social Security. I do want Medicare A and B. You tell them what you're up to. And then again, as a result, they'll send out the Medicare A and B card. So, this is how to get Medicare A and B at 65. If anyone puts their hand up in a minute and says, what happens if I work past 65? I will say, hold on, and I will press this button. So, questions on this? Is there any reason at all not to enroll? My brother was told, he's told me, that they told him at work not to enroll for Medicare. I said, I think that's crazy. Well, it depends what he's doing at 65 and one day. Is he still working? He right, that's different. Work, and I guess they have a good retirement plan. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the next slide. Okay. I'm talking, someone here says I'm retiring at 65 and I'm taking Medicare A and B. I've got that slide covered. Okay. Um, questions on this? So, your login ID to check your Social Security benefits down the line when you retire is the same login that you accomplished this through? Yes, yeah, because you're logging into the same thing. Okay. So, it's not separate account. No, 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 no. no. All right, well, this is good. Either I've lost you all already, or we're all going, yeah, to make it a lot of All right, now, that's if you're turning 65 and retiring and taking Medicare A and B. Some people, quite a lot of people, work past the age of 65 or are covered by a spouse who's continuing to work. In other words, they say, well, I've got group insurance. I don't need me, I don't need this Medicare, I've got group insurance, it's very good, low premiums and everything like this. <coughs> There's always exceptions, but generally if you are working past the age of 65 and you have checked and your company will cover you and the premium is not too high and the coverage is good, what you would normally do at that instance is, again, go on to socialsecurity.gov. Let them know. Oh, I don't need Social Security, thank you very much. I don't need Medicare, I'm still working. I know it's simplified, but, but and then what's gonna happen as a result of Social Security putting that information into the system, so to speak, it's gonna generate a Medicare card with just Part A. Some of you put your hand up and said you had Part A, didn't you? So, so would it be fair to say you're over the age of 65, you're still working or covered by a spouse, and you don't even know what Part A would do if you had to get it out and show it to someone? You carry around with the group insurance, don't you? Just please say yes. <laughs> right. So, so the point is this. Generally, if someone is working past the age of 65 or covered by a spouse, 
you would expect them to have just Medicare Part A. You go on Social Security, you tell them this is me, blah, blah. They send you out the card with Part A and, and they basically with the same thing says, you know, please don't use this, don't show it to anyone, carry on with the group insurance as if it never existed. All right, it's just their way of acknowledging you telling them. Now, in some instances, you'll get people that will go, well, oh, I, I worked past the age of 65, I, I didn't want Medicare or Social Security, so I just, I just didn't talk to them, I never had a word with them. And, and, and you know, they're 67 and they have neither A or B. They get a little bit worried every now and then. As long as you've got credible coverage from your company that's as good as, if not better than Medicare, then it just means that when you have your eventual, when you have your appointment with Social Security, there's a little bit more work to be done. So most people that work past the age of 65 have that Part A card. They don't use it. They don't show it to anyone. Some people work past the age of 65. And because they never had a word with Social Security, they have neither part of Medicare. It's all right. It's all right. It just means there's a bit more work to do. So, we work past the age of 65, we talk to them, we get Part A, and we get a bit worried about this Part B. I'm going to get a penalty. What's all that about? Now we go to the next slide. So if I'm working past the age of 65, and I've got Part A, let's just pretend. I got Part A and I'm going to retire. Now I've got to go and get this Part B. Now we cannot do this online because we hear all this business about <coughs> penalties. So we work past the age of 65. We've got Part A, we're going to retire. Part B, again, is always the first of the month. So if you retire or are um, helped into retirement halfway through the month, just make sure you've got insurance until the end of the month, you know, so you know when to take the Medicare Part B. Do I take it at the following month? Do I take it at the beginning of the month? Just remember, the Part B, again, is effective the first of the month. When can you apply for it? Up to three months before you need it to start. So if you're planning out your retirement, put that into it three months beforehand. I can apply for it. Um, if, all right, you know, for example, if you've got three months, fantastic. If someone came in here tonight and said, well, I just found out I'm retiring. I hadn't planned on it. I'm retiring October the 1st. All right, now you've got three weeks. It is what it is. If you've got three months, use it. If you've got three weeks, it is what it is, all right? Don't panic. That's the main thing. Now. Some people have heard of COBRA, whereby you can keep your regular group insurance if you are eligible for Medicare. Do not take COBRA for more than eight months. Don't take it for more than eight months. If you take nothing else from this, take that. Please take other things from, it, from this book. All right, now, so. I can apply for the Part B up to three months before I retire. Right hand side is going to be how I do it. Now you hear about this penalty. This Part B penalty, I didn't take it at 65, so I'm going to get a penalty. Well, Social Security says, well, look, if you can provide proof that you didn't take it because you were working and therefore didn't need it, we're all right with that. And so there are two forms, <laughs> life-size replicas, two forms that you need to get filled out. CMS L564, which is the request for proof of employment, and the CMS 40B, which is the actual Part B application. You can go home, switch on your computer, do it at the library, they've got computers here at me, do it here. And you can put in, you know, on the Google search, whatever, put in CMS L564, 40B. One of the first five or six things to come up is going to be the PDF of that form. Watch out, because some of the other bits are going to be advertisements. One of the first five or six is going to be the PDF printed. Here, again, here they are. There's, each form is one page. There's the application for Part B, CMS 40B. It's half a page. It's 30 seconds to fill it out. There's a couple of pages of instructions. God bless them. So there's, just pass things around. 
Pass those around. So that's the application for part B. This is the request for employment information. And this is a form that your employer, your HR department, is going to fill part of this out, attestifying the fact that you had coverage from such a date to such a date. That's the form that stops the penalty. If someone has had more than one job since the age of 65, you're going to need one of those for each employer. Just bear that in mind. Social Security is looking for continuous coverage since you were 65. Otherwise, then you're going to start to give you a little penalty. All right? So, and now, when you fill those forms out, yes, you can mail them to, to your Social Security office. Don't. The, the thing to do, again, if you've got three months, make an appointment, get in there, sit down with someone, present them with the forms, ask your questions, make sure the forms have been filled out correctly. If you can't get an appointment very soon, stand in line. Again, don't be, you know, don't be, um, some, some of them will say, you know, they'll be very nice. And they'll say, oh, you can leave them in a pile there so you don't have to stand in line. No, I want to stand in line. I want to. And, and you want to speak to someone. You want to make sure the forms are filled out correctly. You want to make sure that you get your questions answered. So don't be, you know, get right up to the counter and see people. So if you're working past the age of 65 or you're covered by a spouse, you need to apply for Part B. That's how you do it. Questions on that, please. I just have one. I've heard that there's a two-year look back for Part B. As far as a two-year look back for Part B, that's covered in two slides time. Okay. That is, you're talking about the premium. Two slides time, it'll be really exciting. Are you also going to cover, this is sort of the second part of the question, is that based upon um, a married couple's income, or is that based upon individual income? I'll have to wait and see in two slides. I'm as excited as you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, a question about Colburn. You said... Next slide, next slide. It's the next slide. Next slide. Okay. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Whatever the question is, it's on the next slide. <laughs> for part A. I went on the website and I was told by my insurance to go there and I was going to continue to work but I was on the understanding that I had to apply. Mm -hmm. and that's what they told me. And somehow I applied and she said don't do B. Just do A. So I thought I did. I don't know what I did but they sent me a card for A and B and then a bill. Now the good news is, is I did go to the Social Security office. If you're going to go, go to the Lawrence one. Do not go to the Malton one. I've been to both. And <laughs> Say that again, please, for everyone. Go to Lawrence. Yeah. It's just right over past the... Go theater. to the Lawrence Social Security office. It, it comes highly minutes. recommended. I was two hours in the Malton, and there was a lot of people there. I don't know anybody mm -hmm. So I'm just giving that up. And one quick thing. Thank you, thank you. And it was really good at me. All I had to do was fill out a form. And they said, just fill this up. You're fine now. You'll get a new card. It was very easy. Let me add one other scenario to this because, you know, we might think, well, everyone gets to 65 and everything happens the same way. Let's say you turn 65 and you're collecting Social Security, but you're continuing to work. And so they automatically send you out the Medicare card. Here it is. Isn't it lovely? But they're going to say, look, if you don't need us yet, sign it, fill it out, send it back to them. And then they'll send you another Medicare card with just part A, which again is free. So just because you get the A and B card doesn't mean you're obligated to take it. You might say, well, I'm taking social because I'm needing it, but I don't need Medicare, I'm still working. You can fill it out, send it back, and then they'll send you out just the part A. All right. Any other questions on this? And now with eager anticipation. <laughs> We can press the button. All right, now, a little bit about this, this um, COBRA and, and, and other instances. You know, we, we hear, you know, if I don't take RP and if I don't take Medicare, I'm going to get a penalty. So let's say someone gets Medicare Part A and they say, I never see a doctor. I'm not going to pay for Part B. It's ridiculous. I'm not paying. That's a potential penalty. If someone um, works, oh no, sorry, if someone retires and um, they're eligible for Medicare and they take COBRA and they take COBRA for more than eight months, again, that's 
when they're going to be eligible for a penalty. I, I come across this, God, if, if I said twice a year, I couldn't remember the second one. But it, it, you, you get it very rarely. But, but right, let me paint the scenario. You're married. And you happen to marry someone that doesn't have the same birthday as you. They're younger. No, but well, the point is this. Let's say you're covering that person. And you retire at 65. And you go, I'm retiring. I'm going to play golf. And they go, oh, what, 65? Yeah, what am I going to do? Sometimes... You know, you might say, well, I will take Cobra for you, and we, everything will be all right. We will be on Cobra, and we will carry on on the same insurance. What ultimately Cobra is, is where you can continue with the same insurance that you had when you were working, but now you're paying essentially the full premium, maybe a little bit more, to, to your employer or ex-employer. And so you can have this Cobra generally for up to 18 months or whatever. But again, if you are eligible for Medicare, you take the Cobra for more than eight months, this is what happens. And I had that exact situation with a chap um, up in uh, Essex County. He did exactly that for his wife. And she got the 65 and she said, I'm going to get Medicare and Tufts in the world. And then he said, he then went into Social Security to apply for Part B. He'd had Cobra for more than eight months. He went in to Social Security in October. And this is what they said. They said, well, it's very nice to see you. I'm sure they said that. <laughs> and, and, and they said, they said, can you come back between January the 1st and March the 31st? And by the way, your Part B is going to start July the 1st. Oh, and, and if you can pay more for it than everybody else, you can have a 10% penalty for every year you didn't take it. So the poor chap, he went from October right the way through July with just Part A which if you don't know, is for hospitals only. Yeah, and, and I tried all sorts of Commonwealth Connector and all this sort of stuff, and he couldn't get anything else. So <coughs> if you're eligible for Medicare, don't take COBRA for more than eight months. And if you, if you sort of say, well, I don't, I'm not paying for Medicare Part B, I don't see a doctor, again, this is, this is what's going to happen. So, so just be aware of that. Any questions on that slide, please? What's the eight months? What is the eight? Why, why is it eight months? I have no idea. <laughs> I think many, Medicare is basically saying, look, from the time that you get Medicare, from the time that you're eligible for Medicare, we kind of expect you to have made a decision or have done something about it within those eight months. If not, we're going to penalise you because, because maybe now you're taking Medicare because you need it and you're going to cost us money. So Medicare says, uh, why it's eight months and not seven, not nine, and that's, that's Medicare, I don't represent it. Yes? <laughs> but if the person who's turning 65 is covered by their spouse's insurance. And the spouse continues to work. Yes. We go back to the previous slide. Because that's not COBRA, is it? No. So we go back to the previous slide, I'm working, I'm covered by my spouse who's working, I only have part A, because I'm covered by my spouse. When my spouse retires, I take these forms into Social Security with my spouse and I don't have a penalty. What's the, what's the paid for life in the last, in the slide, last slide? Here? Last slide? No, no, the, the this one. The penalty, yeah. no, the penalty is 10% of the Part B premium. What's the paid for life mean though? You're gonna, well, in other words, you're gonna pay that penalty for the rest of your life. This, this penalty, this 10% penalty of the premium for every year you didn't take it, but the point is that penalty stays with you. It doesn't go away after a year or two. It stays with you for the rest of your life. So for the rest of your life, your penalty, your Part B premium is going to be 10% or whatever it is, 20% higher than anybody else's for the rest of your life. One last question. So this deals with Part D. I thought if you got Part A, you were you were fine, but you could still get Part A and get in trouble. It sounds like no, no. Go back to the previous slide. I've got Part A. I'm working past 65. I've got Part A. Did the right thing. Had a word with Social Security. I'm working. I'm going to retire. I'm filling out these two forms to apply for Part B. And as long as I've got insurance, that's as good as. Medicare, if not better, credible insurance. I mean, if you've got insurance that's worse than Medicare, <laughs> run, run like an Olympian. 
Um, no, no, so the point is, so if I've got insurance that's um, as good as, if not better than Medicare, these forms are filled out at the end, providing that verification, and these forms are the ones that stop that Part B penalty. Because it, it lets you know Social Security, and I didn't take Part B because I didn't need it. Here's the proof of that other insurance. Right. Now, you've done all that hard work, and this is what you end up with. Medicare A and B. Let me give you an overview of, of what we've actually got here. Don't, right, when I, when I tell this to you and I explain it to you, don't, um, how can I say, be too concerned or, 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 or go, or be worried or whatever. Just understand, most people take this as a base and they get something else. All right, you know. So, don't be concerned when I tell you all about this. Just understand, you know, just say to yourself, oh, I think I need something else. And then you go off and concentrate on the other things, which will be on the next slide. <laughs> so, two parts of Medicare, A and B. A is free. A is for an inpatient hospital stay, skilled nursing facility, and hospice. Now, part A said, if you are admitted to the hospital, as an inpatient, doesn't matter if you're in there one night or multiple nights, you are going to be responsible to pay the hospital the part A hospital deductible this year of $1,364. Again, it's not per day, it's not per stay. Medicare says it's per benefit period. And so Medicare says this benefit period starts the first day you are admitted to the hospital. It doesn't matter if you're in the hospital. One night, 20 nights, it doesn't matter. Once you have been out of the hospital for 60 consecutive days, then the benefit period resets. And if you go back in on 61 days, 180 days or whatever, ka benefit period resets and you're subject to pay that again. If I'm in the hospital for a couple of weeks and I come home and two weeks later I go back in, doesn't matter for what reason, doesn't matter for what hospital, if I go back in within the 60 days, I only pay that once. As long as soon as I've been out for 60 days plus, Ka-ching, it resets and I'm subject to pay that again. Again, don't deep dive on it, just say to yourself, hmm, I need some better coverage than that by itself. Now, as part A, free hospital inpatient stay. Part B is the optional one, what we've been talking. And part B is the one that covers you for doctors, tests, and outpatient medical services. So Part B this year has a premium for most people of $135.50. Now, if you are collecting Social Security, it's taken automatically out of the Social Security before you ever get it, done deal. If on the other hand you say, well, I'm taking Medicare, but I'm not taking Social Security yet, then what's going to happen is Social Security is going to send you a bill in the mail for three months premium at a time until you do take Social Security. You left them thinking for a while while he had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so either way, you're either going to get a bill in the mail or if you're taking Social Security, it's taken out. Now, not everyone pays $135.50. It is based on your income. Social Security does a two-year look back based on your income as declared on your taxes. So I don't want any of this pre, post, what about this? Whatever you declare on your taxes, that's what it is. I don't have a chart. If you go to socialsecurity.gov or medicare.gov, they will have a chart. And it, you know, um, married filing singly, married filing jointly, single filing single. It, it has the three, you know, if it's between this and this and this and this. Now, 
And you've got to be kidding, because you can pay up to $460 for exactly the same Part B, depending on your income. Now, at the other end of the scale, if your income is low enough, put that down here, if your, hand, if, if, if your income is low enough, the Part B can be taken care of for you. It can have, you can have no premium for the B, it can be free. Um, you are able, you know, they, the, when they let you know what the, the premium is, if it, if it is higher, they will let you know the appeals process. You know, if it's a hardship, what have you, um, you can certainly appeal. Um, and just remember, if you, if you um, go into retirement and then all of a sudden you go down to Boston and you, you gamble at that new place, <laughs> and you're the one that wins everybody else's money, or you're coming into an, an inheritance. And the point is, if your income goes up for one re you know, inheritance or whatever, if your income goes up, it's the government. They know. So all of a sudden, you're well into retirement and bang, up it goes if you, if you get a windfall or an inheritance. So just be aware of that. All right, part B, doctors, tests, outpatient. This year, there is an annual deductible of $185. So the first $185 of Part B services that come across their front door, you're going to be responsible for. Then it's Part B that pays 80% of the reasonable charge. You pay 20% of the reasonable charge. Now I say that, bear with me. Whenever Medicare processes a claim, they're going to send you piece of paper with the legend at the top, this is not a bill. And it will let you know who you saw, what the services were. Then it's going to say, this is how much the provider submitted. This is how much the provider has agreed with Medicare to accept as payment in full. This went to the deductible. This got paid at 80%. You may receive a bill for this amount. So Medicare is going to let you know, when you're using Medicare to pay your bills, Medicare is going to let you know where you stand with everything by sending you the piece of paper. In Massachusetts, a provider cannot balance bill for the difference. Um, in other states, they, there's about three or four other states um, that, that they can actually um, bill a little bit more. They, they don't have to accept assignment, but again, in the Medicare book, it will um, let you know those other states, okay? But in Massachusetts, whatever Medicare allows, that's what everything is based on. <coughs> so essentially, when we're using Medicare to pay our bills, hospital deductible, medical deductible, 20%. Those are the three things that we are responsible for for covered Medicare services. And when you're not well, Medicare is pretty much going to cover what you need, but it's going to leave you paying a bit of money out of your pocket. Right hand side, with this Medicare card, you can see anyone in the country who accepts Medicare. Some of you sort of, you know, you hear every now and then, oh, not everyone accepts Medicare because they don't pay that much. That's mass health. If someone doesn't accept Medicare, run. <laughs> everyone accepts Medicare, we know, pretty much all across the country. You know, so you can see anyone in the country who accepts Medicare. No networks, no referrals, no ins and outs. Now also, there is no maximum out of pocket. So you've got to be careful. If we're using Medicare by itself, these, depending on how we're doing, these can start to add up. Let me give you an example. Let's say you go to the hospital for five days. You enjoy that best food ever. <laughs> and and so, so you say, okay, I know I'm going to be responsible for that. Fair enough. But the trouble is, if you're seeing independent doctors, let's say the surgeon, the anesthesiologist, let's say they're independent, they come in, do their thing, <coughs> they're having lunch, that's what they're doing, they're having lunch. If so they come in and they do their thing, and then they leave, in other words, they're not part of the hospital staff, they're sending in their bills down here. So you, you expect that, but then all of a sudden you start to get this as well. So you've got to be careful. There's no maximum out of pocket. Medicare does not cover you out of the country. The only exception is if you're in America, something happens, 
and the nearest facility is across the border in Canada or Mexico. That's the only exception. And this Medicare A and B has nothing to do with Part D. I'll tell you all about that on the next slide. Questions on, yes? Um, you mentioned about being admitted to a hospital. And I know that hospital would use the category called observation. <laughs> so yeah. what impact does that have in terms of what Medicare will pay? Hospitals used to, this was in the news, this was quite a few years ago now. Hospitals used to use this business whereby we're not actually admitting you. Oh, no, 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 no. The fact that you're lying there and sleeping overnight and you can have breakfast with us, we haven't admitted you. You are here for observation. And that was a big thing a few years ago because it has some repercussions with Medicare as far as getting into a skilled nursing facility. That's pretty much stopped. I haven't heard anything. I can literally say I haven't heard anything for five years. And it was it was about seven or so years ago that this was all going on, and this stopped. I've not. No, heard. I'm, I'm facing that now for a family member, where they, the person was in the hospital for only two days as observation, and there's a ruling or policy that says you have to be in the hospital for three nights, yeah. and then. It, then it has to be considered admitted before you can get services in a rehab. And then the yeah. rehab, depending if it's the same network, that isn't an issue. But if your RPCP is not within the same network, then they, fortunately, for my situation, they were able to get a waiver so that the rehab portion would be paid by Medicare. And, and, you know, other insurance. Let me just, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly summarize that for everyone. So one of the quirks about Medicare A and B is in order to have a skilled nursing rehab inpatient state, you know, for physical therapy or whatever, in order to have that covered by Medicare, you must have a hospital stay of three nights or more. Two nights, sorry, one night too short. And this is where this business of you're being held for observation comes in, whereby that's not deemed impatient. So someone might be held for observation. We just want to watch you to see if the medication changes or see if you have a reaction or whatever it is. And if you're not admitted as an inpatient, you are just held for observation, that doesn't go towards the minimum of three nights in order to have the skilled nursing facility covered. All right. And, and it's, it's one of the quirks of Medicare. But again, you look at that and you say, OK, maybe that's a concern. Maybe we, you know. Um, and, and then you go to the next slide and go out into the show and find something that's going to address that. Any other questions on the A and the B? Yes, If you go to the emergency room and you're not admitted, you're discharged the same day. That's part B. Part B. Yeah. Back. What does one do if you are leaving the country and you want to make sure you have coverage? You have to seek your Is one leaving the country and never coming back, or is one on, you know, you're on vacation? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me get to the other. So, all right. So, Medicare, so you say, all right, then fair enough, this isn't going with me. Now, that's a good segue to the next slide, which goes over your options with Medicare. Most people look at this. And they say, well, it's just not enough. I'm going to leave the country um, vacation. I need prescription drug coverage. I'm worried about this inpatient hospital stay versus skilled nursing. And so you've got to, and this for a lot of people is, is one of the harder things to actually figure out for yourself what you are going to do besides this. Because when you're working for a company and they say, here are your options this year, thank you very much. And, that, and that's it, you know, you ain't got no choice, it is what it is, you get on with it and you don't worry about it. When you retire and that rug is pulled out from underneath you, and now it's down to you and no one else, and you kind of go jelly legged, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, and it gets a bit worrying because you don't know what to expect, you don't know what's reasonable, you don't know what all this life is going to cost you, you know. So the point is this, before you start phoning up companies and going, yes, I would like you to send me out an envelope or two, please, before you do that, have a
have an idea of what you want. And I, I, I doesn't say, no, you know, I'm going to travel abroad. I need these prescriptions covered. I need this particular doctor. I want to go where I like. I need glasses. I need hearing aids. Um, I'm in the wellness. My budget is whatever. Figure out what you want. I'm serious. Figure out what you want. And again, understand that this is not a five-year or a ten-year or the rest of your life. This is for the rest of the year. Figure out what you want. And if you're married, everything is now individual. So your spouse is going to go, don't look. Figure out what I want. <laughs> you know, everything's individual. Everything's individual. So you figure out what you want. And yeah, I want everything, but I don't want to pay anything. <laughs> Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Now, so, so armed with that information, it's a lot easier when you start pulling up companies and saying, yeah, I want the packet, send me the packet. The, the, it's a lot easier to, to say, look, this is what I'm looking for. If you have it or something close to it, we'll have a conversation and, and you know, but if, if you know, you phone up a company and we don't cover your many cases, you go, okay, good luck to you. You know, I'm not going to be joining you. Okay, so have an idea. And so we go into the show. And again, I'm not talking toughs. I, I will use, right, I will use, um, I, I'm going to round off premiums. So you have roughly an idea of what are you looking at. You're looking at a Prius, you're looking at a Ferrari, what you're looking at. And, then, and, it, and if, you know, if you use buying a car as an example, uh, uh, also a very pleasurable experience. If you use buying a car as an example, when you go into the showroom and you are confronted by the sales representative, you know I want the red one. It's out there. I'm not going to pay more than $300. Don't even try. You know, you know what you want. You know the colour. You know everything. Whereas when you when you call up a health insurance company, you generally, you know, you, you don't know where to start, where to stop. All health insurance plans across the country. And I'm talking. If someone here is is work for the state or the town or a company that offers retiree benefits. This slide is relevant as well, but if you have retiree benefits, your company can come along and, and add riders and tweak things around a little bit. I, this is primarily for, for someone that's saying I'm retiring, no retiree benefits, I've got to do everything by myself. Point is, doesn't matter what company you go to, doesn't matter what state you live in, this is your showroom. It's a good showroom, but if you can understand the differences and the you know whys and all that lot, it's going to make it a lot more relevant. So, if you are writing on the pieces of paper, you start off at the top. Whatever you do, you must have Medicare A and B. You must keep it, and you keep it by paying for it. So, we're starting 135.50, 135.50, 135.50. thin stuff. So, before you even go shopping, you've just paid 135.50 dollars a month. Don't forget that, all right? Now, I'm not saying any of these options are good or bad. That is entirely up to you. Someone, though, might say, that Medicare, 80% coverage, I long for that. And they may say, right, I'm having Medicare from the doctors and hospitals. I'm going to leave it at that for my doctors and hospitals, but I want Part D, prescription drugs. So let's understand. You don't phone up Medicare and say, can I have a Part D drug plan? And that's a very short conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens is Medicare lays out the shell of the average Part D plan across the country. There is an average premium of this, there is a deductible, there's percentages, there's a formulary, and there is the gap. And Medicare says, tell you what private plans, private companies, you offer your version of that and we'll pay you every month for everyone you enroll. So all these private companies come along, some you've heard of, some you haven't, and they will have this premium, we'll have this deductible, we'll have this formulary, and Medicare pays them for everyone they enroll. So you get Part D from private companies. Excuse me. 
Has anyone seen this? Has anyone read it from cover to cover? I don't mean like that. All right, the point is this. When you get Medicare, you eventually get this. And it goes over all of Medicare up the front. But when this is sent to you in the mail, it's specific to where you live. And so you go side, you go, you turn, go to the back, turn it sideways, just like that. And you do this, and it says here are all of the Part D drug plans available where you live. This year, there are 26. Nothing like that, but there was 23 last year. You think that's way too many. This year, 26. There's 26 standalone Part D prescription plans for you to choose from. The premiums range from $14 to $127 a month. Now, that's a big array, that's a big choice, and a big variance in premium. You can get that lot sorted out in eight minutes. This is how you do it. You go to the official Medicare website, medicare.gov. And the home page opens up, and there are three green buttons. The one on the left says something like, choose medical and drug plans. Click on it. And then it's going to say, put in your zip code. And this is the only thing it ever knows about. It's, it's all totally anonymous. You put in your zip code. Then Medicare is going to ask you three questions. One, do you have Medicare? Pretend. I'm not saying lie, I'm saying pretend. Age yourself. Yes, I have Medicare. <laughs> yeah. Say so pretend you have Medicare. Then it's going to say, do you get any extra assistance? Yeah, that's up to you to you know, figure out if you're getting assistance. Most people, it's not. And then the third question is, do you want to enter your prescriptions? Yes. And then the next slide is, is going to say, now put in all of your prescriptions. Strength, quantity, and it will you know, remind you of you know, a generic version of this, and all that sort of thing. And again, this is Medicare, so it's not biased any one way or the other. You're putting in all your meds. Then it's going to say, what pharmacy do you go to? And, and just, you know, it, it, it's got every pharmacy in there where it's giving it to you in a you know, mile radius from where you live. You can make that radius bigger. Put in the pharmacy that you go to. And the understanding that when you've gone to the results, you can go back and change your pharmacy to get see if you get a different result. So you put in the pharmacy. Then it's going to say, go to results. And the, there's three different results. But the top one says, Medicare, get off. Might have that deal. It's going to say the top one is going to say Medicare and prescription drug plans. You click on it. And while it's doing that, just like that, while it's doing that, Medicare is calculating and it's figuring out of these 26, which is the most cost effective for the rest of the year. And it's going to bring you the plans back. Again, in the order of most cost effective. So the first one that comes back, it's not saying it's got the best customer service or it's the most wonderful. It's saying, based on your medications, it's the most cost effective, premiums, deductibles, co-pays, it's the most cost effective for the rest of the year. Any other plan is going to cost you more. And if you and that's about eight minutes of your life. Do that tonight. Um, and if you click on the name of the plan, this is extra information. If you click on the name of the plan and go into the results, it will tell you how much it's going to cost you for the rest of the year at the pharmacy, how much it's going to cost you for the rest of the year if you use the mail order, the name of the plan, uh, the premium, the phone number to call, any deductible. And then as you scroll down, it's going to tell you how much your prescriptions cost at that particular pharmacy. And you scroll down a little bit more, and it's going to give you a bar graph of every single month. And it's going to break it down into colors. And it's going to say, right, this much is premium, there's your deductible, that's in orange, and then your green is your co payments. And it's going to break it down every single month. So you know, not only do you know it's $600 for the rest of the year, you know how that's broken down. Medicare.gov. Good website. All right. First option, whether it be good or bad, and if you say, well, I just don't take medicine, I grow 
in the back garden or buy it from various outlets these days. You, no one says you have to have a drug plan. If you don't take medicines, no one says you have to have a drug plan, but yes, if you do delay taking the Part D, then you're going to be assessed a penalty, which again, you're going to carry with you for the rest of your life. It's not a very large penalty, but it builds up year after year, and the poor drug plan that you choose is going to be told by Medicare, God, charge them the premium and the penalty as well. And so the poor drug plan is going to have to collect that penalty. So that's your first option, be it good or bad. I've got Medicare for all my medical needs. I've gone out and got a Part D drug plan. Next option in the showroom from any company. If you say, well, what about these Medicare deductibles? What about that 20%? You kept quiet about that. What about that lot? Next option is a supplement, often referred to as a Medigap plan. Now, like the name suggests, it's supplementing Medicare, it's picking up the balances with Medicare. So, when I go to a doctor or a hospital, here's my Medicare card, and I have a supplement. The provider sends the bill to Medicare, 80% deductible, whatever. Medicare forwards the balance to the supplement. And we are looking at the supplement to pay the 20% on the deductibles. So effectively, between Medicare and the supplement, we have 100% coverage. Medicare pays it with its balances, supplement mops up the floor and pays the balances, so to speak. Um, so I've got Medicare in the driver's seat, I go where I like, supplements pay the balances. Now, supplements pay balances for covered Medicare services. So if anyone starts to go, well, does the supplement cover this? Can I see this doctor? Does the provider accept Medicare? Does the provider, you know, does the service, is the service covered by Medicare? Great, supplements pay balances. If Medicare doesn't cover something, generally, neither will the supplement. Classic point, Medicare aim, pick your head off. <laughs> He's from Blue Cross. Um, <laughs> So, so Medicare A and B goes first, supplements pay balances. I go out and get a separate Part D drug plan from one of those 26 in here if I want Part D coverage. Foreign travel, um, most, well, I'm going to say every supplement will cover you in some form going abroad. I can say both of ours do, I can't speak for anyone else. Both of them will cover you, whereas Medicare doesn't. So, Go back to your specification. If it says, I want to be able to see anyone in the country who accepts Medicare, I don't want networks, I don't want referrals, I don't want co-payments, I certainly don't want a deductible. If any of that is on your specification, this is the way to go. Medicare first, mops up the floor, pays the balances, they're going out on a se separate drug plan. All right? The third way. Oh, oh, sorry, let me give you the premiums uh, uh, on average. On average, any company, or every company in Massachusetts, every company in Massachusetts offers supplements. When you go to this book, and some people do it, and they are very excited to try and prove me wrong. And in this book, it shows about 11 Eventually it does. It shows you about 11, come on, oh, there it is. On page 70 for that, yeah. it shows you about 11 different types of supplements. So in other states, it's really confusing. In Massachusetts, it's easy. There are two supplements. Any company that offers a supplement offers two supplements. The more affordable one doesn't cover the deductibles. It only pays the 20%. The more expensive one pays the deductibles and the 20%, giving you 100% coverage. The more affordable one, I'm rounding up dollar amounts, the more affordable one, on average, is about $100. The more expensive one that leaves you with no balance is around $200, okay? And so, 135, 100 to 200, 14 to 
127. Okay, so that's, if you want to go where you like, that's where you go. Third option, third column. Still got Medicare, still paying for it. Third column is what we call Medicare Advantage. We sometimes heard, well, hear that, referred to as Part C. Now, still got Medicare, still paying for it. But now we've got to stop and think of Medicare a little bit differently. Medicare is a means of paying money, and we normally jump on it and go, yeah, they're going to pay 80%. What happens on the third column? is Medicare figures out what it expects to pay out in claims every month for people that live in a given area. Someone might never see a doctor, you've got someone over there had two nights in the hospital, they're gonna have an MRI, they're gonna see specialists, whatever. Medicare figures out what they're gonna expect to pay out in claims. And then they average that out over the year. And Medicare says to the Advantage plan, somewhat similar to what they said to the drug plan, you take over everything. You take over everything, and we will pay you a percentage of that money every month. Doesn't matter if the person sees a doctor or not. Medicare is paying the Advantage Plan to take over everything. So therefore, the Medicare deductibles, 20%, doesn't exist. If a claim is sent to Medicare by mistake, Medicare is going to reject it and say, oh, we're busy paying the Advantage Plan. Can you send the bill there, please? So now, our attention goes to this advantage plan. What's the premium? How does it work? What's my co-payment? An advantage plan, uh, well, all right, a couple of things. One, Medicare says it's only gonna pay one plan at a time. So Medicare says, you want the advantage plan, we will pay them on your behalf. If you want part D, you can't get one of these 26 in here. Now you've got to find an advantage plan that includes part D. So, like you're all used to right now, you end up with one plastic card with medical and prescriptions on the same card. All right, it's still part D. Don't, don't get fixed, it's got to be by itself. It's still part D, but it's part of, it's part of a medical plan. Medicare's only going to pay one plan at a time. Any advantage plan, is going to have a form of network. HMO, PDO, private fee for service, whatever it is, there's a form of network. And we cannot assume, just because I'm on X, Y, and Z commercial plan right now, that my doctor will take their advantage. No, separate contract, you've got to go back to your primary care doctor and say, what advantage plans do you take? Some will only take one or two, some will take all of them. Go back and find out. Don't make an assumption. An advantage plan is going to have co-payments, like your regular plan. And, a, and an advantage plan is going to have um, your wellness benefits, you know, physicals and all that sort of thing. It's, it's a lot more what you're used to. And again, an advantage plan will have out-of-country coverage, but again, it may well be limited as such. So that is your showroom. So if, right, then right-hand column, if, if you say, um, I want to put my medical and my drugs together and I'm fine with my doctor overseeing my care and I'll have a co-payment to lower the premium, then the right hand side would be appropriate, alright? As far as premiums, so, any advantage plan that you look at is going to come along and give you a number of different levels <coughs> to choose from. All the levels are exactly the same. The things, you know, it's as far as the relationship with Medicare, the doctors, the services, the way the plans work, the formulary for your prescriptions, that's all the same. They change two things. The premium and the copayment. So the point is this, and again, you see, not everyone has the same needs, comfort level, same wallet or pocketbook. So they say, all right, here are the more expensive plans. They have lower copayments. And then here are the more affordable plans. They have higher copayments. You find a level I'm comfortable paying this every month versus paying this if I go to a doctor or a hospital. Now, 
We're in what? Uh, are we in Essex County or are we still in Middlesex? Who said Essex? Oh, right. So, I'll, 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 all right. I'll try and make this as easy as I can. I just use Tufts as an example. Um, we have all right, eight advantage plans. Three of those do not include prescriptions. So if someone says, I don't take prescriptions, I'm not paying for it, fine. If someone says, I go to the VA, fine. We've got three plans, just medical, that do not include prescriptions, have at it. We have five plans that include medical and prescription. Difference, premium versus co-payment. All right, now, at the far end, the most expensive one, $199 a month, lowest co-payments. At the other end of the scale, our most affordable one, doctors, hospitals, foreign travel, Part D prescriptions, and all sorts of other things, has no premium. So you hear about these people every now and then, I have a plan that has no premium. It's because the money that the plan is paid by Medicare, allied to the way the co-payments are structured, that's what drives the premium. Most affordable one has no premium. You're going to get a statement every month that says, please don't pay us anything. What are you paying? You're paying for your Medicare. So 135.50, zero, all the ones in between, top one $199. Right, before I go on any further, any questions on this slide? Yes, um, You mentioned that there are plans where the premium would be zero for a man. Yes. And somebody, I mean, some, if you have Medicare and another plan, say Mass Health, and we get these notices about, I got this plan that I can give you, and there's no cost to you. I'm a little leery about switching off because right now everything is copacetic, but it's like you switch to something like that, I'm afraid of losing coverage from saying that self. Well let's okay, so let's let's have a look here. If all right, we have Medicare A and B. Now if someone has mass health, the options for someone with mass health are generally going to be a little bit different. Um, and, I, and I'm not talking about mass health tonight, strictly speaking, but, but there are different levels of mass health. The um, highest level of mass health is called mass health standard. And there's, they're not any of these plans, there's different plans that come along and sit on top of mass health standard and just make things better. Again, ask questions, whether we now are on the phone, and then you'll, you'll get the answers. But, yeah, you, it's, it's right to be there, and if it's someone that had mass health standard, none of these would be relevant. There'd be programs that specifically go with mass health. At the back, sir? Yes, are all these decisions made during an enrollment period only? There are different times that you can make these decisions. Obviously, one is when you first get Medicare A and B. Then, at the end of every year, everyone with Medicare A and B, an individual, not the group, an individual, has what is called the annual election period, which is from October the 15th to December the 7th, where you can make a change for January the 1st. In Massachusetts, there's only one pre-existing condition, um, and that applies to Medicare Advantage, and that's if someone has end-stage renal disease, you hear it abbreviated ESRD, that's because Medicare has a special program, and Medicare would want you to go on that program. Other than that, you can switch up, down, sideways at the end of every year. It doesn't matter. There's one ex well, there are exceptions to that. Um, for example, I think it's, I'll, I'll switch, uh, I spent a little bit too much time here, but if we were to go to page, we were, of course means we all, we all are, um, <laughs> If we went to page 11, I will go to page 11. Yeah, all this exciting stuff. Right. So, if I'm taking a supplement, sorry, this is page 9. Sorry, when I said 11, I was in earnest, but I. So, excuse me, if I take a supplement which is paying the balances, 
I can enrol in a supplement any time. If I've got Medicare A and B, and I want to try the joints of Medicare out by itself, and I find out that it is what I thought it was, I can enrol in a supplement any month of the year. Now, Medicare Advantage plans, which effectively uh, are those Advantage plans, and Part D, it's a little bit different. They're funded by Medicare, so Medicare lays down the rules. So Medicare says, is that seven month window around your 65th birthday, is that's when you're gonna get it. If you don't take it then and you delay it, maybe you're working or covered by your spouse over 65, you're gonna pick up Part B, there's your three months beforehand. So those are generally your times when you're gonna do it. Um, there are special circumstances. On the left, this is page 11. Oh, sorry, I didn't, yeah. So this is now page 11. There's special circumstances, if you move from one area to another, let's say you move from New Hampshire to Massachusetts, or you move to another state, whatever point that is in the year, you are then free to choose something um, in that state, because pretty much all of these options are regional, okay? Um, if you're losing or gaining Medicaid, Mass Health, um, the state of Massachusetts has a prescription program called Prescription Advantage, if someone qualifies for that, that gives them a chance to make a change. And if someone's enrolling into a five-star plan, with all of these advantage plans, um, every year Medicare rates them out of five stars. Uh, and if you get five stars, it, it means you can do certain things. So whereas any plan would say at the end of the year you can join or make a change, if you're enrolling in a five-star plan, that plan an advantage plan would generally have open enrollment right through the year, so you can enroll in it any time of the year. Um, and also, if you were a member of that five star plan, it would give you the ability to make a switch during the year as well, besides the end of the year. I'm not going to say who's a five star plan in Massachusetts for four years in a row, I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it, I didn't say it. You know who it is, though, don't you? All right, now, so, <laughs> sorry, all right. Any other questions on the showroom, so to speak? Yes, please. Just a quick question. To enroll in, looking at just the left, the part D. Uh-huh. Do you enroll in, do you need to enroll in D while, when you're enrolling in B to avoid penalties? Or if is you don't, there a separate what is it? Time? It's uh, 62 or 63 days. If you don't enroll, if you take part B, and, and you know, whatever they, and if you don't enroll in a, in, a, in, a, in a drug plan, I think it's within, what, 62, 63 days, then they start to assign you a penalty. So you, so basically you do have to enroll. Well, sometime. if you don't want to get a penalty. <coughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And it's not that great, but it, it is a penalty. Yes, sir, the as far as changing plans, is this the five star you said would enable you to do that or allow you to do that? Do you have to stay with that same company to change plans in their company, or could you actually change to a different right. company? Five star plans only apply to Medicare Advantage and Part D. They don't apply to supplements. So, an example: I'm in a plan that's not five star, and today is the date that it is. I'm in a plan that's not five star and I've just found out I can't see my doctor. He doesn't accept that plan or my new medicine is not covered by that plan. Normally, that plan would say, oh dear, you know, you can make a change at the end of the year. If there's a five star plan out there, you could call that five star plan up and if they met your needs, you could be in that five star plan effective October the 1st. You know, now, if someone is all, let's say someone joins a five-star plan because their Medicare is starting and they join the plan when the Medicare starts. That person who's in a five-star plan would also have the ability to make a once a year off-cycle change if they needed to. You're still in the same plan, the same Medicare Advantage, but you're going up a level, down a level, as the case may be. Maybe you want to save some premium. Maybe you need lower co-payments. You can do that once a year besides the end of the year. Just saying. All right, now, we're gonna leave this behind. 
I, I am required, if not delighted, to tell you about this, this part D, and I'm going to pretty much leave it at that and we will take questions after this. So, part D, prescription drugs. As I said earlier, we can all different premiums, co-pays, deductibles, and so forth. The one thing, every individual Part D plan, regardless of whether it's by itself or combined with an Advantage plan, the one thing a Part D plan must have in this country is the gap, the donor hole. And I'm going to tell you all about it. Sorry. Now, often you will find a plan will have an initial deductible whereby you're either having a deductible that you've got to satisfy on all of your prescriptions or maybe just some of the prescriptions before you get to your initial coverage. So a lot of the plans are going to have a deductible that you have to satisfy first before they will start covering your prescriptions. Then you get to the initial stage where you're going to the pharmacy, paying a co-payment, end of story. Now for most people, that's where it ends. But for some people who take a lot of medications and or some expensive medications, we end up with this gap business. And this is how it goes. And the dollar amounts I'm going to give you, the percentages I'm going to give you, are standard Medicare Part D across this country. No matter where you go, this is the great leveler. So, every month, per the Affordable Care Act, the plan that you want sends you a statement. Effectively saying, this is how much you've paid for your medicine so far. This is how much the plan has paid. This is the cost of your medicine to date. Medicare says, if the cost of your medicine, not what you've paid, if the cost of your medicine reaches $3,820 during the calendar year, you are now in the gap, and the co-payments you have made before are going to stop. Now when you go to get a prescription filled being in the gap, per Medicare, you're going to pay a percentage. You're going to pay 37% of the cost of your generics, 25% for the cost of your brand names. No matter where you go from the mail or, or the pharmacy, now you're paying a percentage. So you're still covered in the gap. Now. The other side of the gap, again, I tell you this, it affects very few people. The other side of the gap is when you have paid $5,100 out of your pocket for covered prescriptions, which could be <coughs> the co-payments and the percentages. When you've paid $5,100 out of your pocket, you go to the catastrophic coverage of the right-hand side, and you have that for the remainder of the year. So if you are taking medicines, <coughs> excuse me, if you're taking medicines that are covered by your plan, about the only time that you're paying for those yourself is if they're going to the deductible. Other than that, you're paying a co-payment, you're paying a percentage, you're paying pennies on the dollar. Do not, I know someone's doing it right now. I don't know who it is, I'm not that clever, but I know someone's doing it. Do not do this. It is not 5,100 minus 3,820. Don't do that. That's the cost of the medicine. That's what you've paid. I'll give you a quick example. Let's say you have a $50 prescription and you go to the pharmacy and they say, $10 co-payment. And you pay your $10, you leave with a prescription. You get the statement from the plan. You have paid 10. We have paid 40. Cost of medicine, $50. It is the cost of the medicine, 50, that goes against that. What you paid out of your pocket, $10, goes against that. That's how it works. All right? Anyone want to ask me a question on that? Good. All right, fine. Now, so supplements I just covered. You've got to have the Medicare A and B. You can enroll any time. Supplements pay balances. Um, how, are we, how are we doing for time? What time do we close tonight? They, oh, they eight. They close at eight. But, oh, the library closes at eight. Yeah, but they kept the dog there. No one needs any more books, do they? Mm -hmm. All right, that's all right. No, all right. <laughs> what, what, time, what time have we got to be out of here? 
Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. All right. So let's go. Let's go. Look. I went over. I went over um, the varnish plans turning sixty-five over sixty-five working. There are exceptions, uh, and I'll give you this. This is so. There's help out there from Medicare, Social Security, Shine, uh, a local volunteers at your senior centre. You can call them up, make an appointment, and they will help you decide for everything. If anyone says, I think I understand this part D, drug coverage, and it is a worry, it is a concern, I know I'm going to go into the gap. The state of Massachusetts has a program called Prescription Advantage, which is where a little bit of cigarette tax goes. And Prescription Advantage is designed to supplement whatever existing part D plan you have, regardless whether it's by itself, or it's part of an advantage plan, if you are just cautious or you know you're going to go in the gap, my advice, apply for prescription advantage. It has open enrollment right through the year. Eligibility is based on income, although you will be incredibly surprised as to how high those income limits are. My advice is you phone them up, you apply. It's, it's income as of, um, based on, on the year before taxes. Okay. Um, and as always, myself, you are free to text, call, email me with any questions, whether it be tomorrow morning or in two years, three years, times, whatever I'll be here. I will be here. Um, questions? Yes, sir. When you were back on, I think it was page seven, mm -hmm. talking about initial selections of plans, you said you put in your medications. You go to Medicare.gov, put in, and it'll tell you the different plans. So now you go from there, you, they're giving you some plans, but now you want to move over to a, uh, an Advantage plan. Will that information be carried over on what, what's the best plan for you to pay for those medications on the Advantage plan? Remember I said when you go to the results, mm -hmm. there's three results you can choose from when you go to Medicare.gov. The top result is Medicare and prescription drug plans. So if I'm just if I'm taking a supplement which doesn't include drugs, or I'm just having Medicare by itself and I want to get a drug plan, I go and click on the top result. Right. The middle result is medical plans that include Part D, which are your advantage plans. You've still got all of your information on your prescriptions and the pharmacy you go to, but you go to the middle one and now it's telling you about the advantage plans. Be very careful though. You, you've got to do a little bit of a double check. It's one thing, oh, there it is, that covers my meds. Doesn't say that it covers your doctor. You've got to be careful there. And then the third result is, is medical plans without prescription drug coverage. Remember I said we had eight plans, three of them don't include, include drugs. So it's basically, you know, you, you, you're having the full price of the Medicine plus whatever the plans are. Yes? On that same um, issue, the medical and the Medicare Advantage plan, uh, you had said that the premium, which is the top uh, biggest, the greatest amount, was about $199. Mm -hmm. Is that in addition to the 135 Whatever you do, you must have Medicare A and B, you must keep it, you must pay for it. Everything else is from a private company which is over and above. So 135.50 plus 0 to 199. So yes, it's it's 199 plus the Medicare. Yes, yes. For the medical part B, the <coughs> premium can range from 135 upwards. You stated it's income based, based on in the income last two, two years. years. Yeah. So does that mean it could change every two years? Your premium, like say I'm. Well, your premium can change every year. Every oh, year they're doing it. So every, every year, so every year, every year, year it can change, but they'll only go back two. So you're always dropping one year. Then? So every year you're looking two years behind. Okay. So they're always dropping. So whereby, if you if you get that windfall down in East Boston or wherever or wherever it is, and you go, Wee -hee, yeah, you're going to forget about it in two years later. Bang! Up goes your premium. You know, it, 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 yeah, it's two years. And again, you can go to Medicare.gov or SocialSecurity.gov. Part B, premium, 
you know, the, the, the income related premium, but you know, search, you can put it in the search, and there's quite a good chart that comes up and answers all the questions about how you're filing and what the to and from. So, so conceivably, when you start, you could have a higher premium because you were working the last two years. Absolutely. And it'll then, and hopefully, over the next couple of years, it would drop. And, it, and it's automatic, your premium is automatically changing. You're not providing copy to TurboTax. It's the government. They know what you earn. So it's automatically adjusting. Um, and again, it doesn't go from 135 to zip to 460, there are levels in between based on your income. It doesn't just go, it, 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 you know, it's a that, gentle. That look back you're talking about, it's not just earned income, it's got the investment income also. Whatever you declare on your taxes. Whatever you declare, taxes. Taxes. Whatever you declare on your taxes. That's where they go. Um, okay, so yes? Is there a dental plan? Is there a dental plan? <laughs> There's a, there, all right then, does your specification say I'm looking for a dental plan? Some people might say I'm looking for vision, I'm looking for hearing. So when you go shopping, and again, what I'm saying is everyone's different. Some plans might have uh, a little bit of dental already part of it. Other plans might say, uh, no, but it's available for an extra amount. See, it's, that's one of the things, you put that down on the other, I want everything for nothing. And then you go asking your questions and, you know, and again, because you see some people might say, I just want a couple of cleanings. Other people might say, oh, I want the full, I've got a lot of expenses coming up, I need a full dental, everyone's different. But that's one of the things you put down as your question and you ask the company to various plans. Yes? What if you live in Essex County? What if you live in Essex County? It's a yes. lovely place, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, if you live in Essex County, all right, so, this is the same, this is the same. When we come to Medicare Advantage plans, the premiums are based on the area in which you live. Because the money that Medicare pays the Advantage plans varies from county to county as Medicare's costs vary. So Medicare says, well, we're gonna give you less or more. So what you sometimes see is the premium might be a little bit higher in Essex County because the money Medicare pays some plans is less. Well, so if, if, if so, so the same, the same, the same, if we said, well, what about these? We would say it still starts at zero, but now the top end, for exactly the same plan, the top end is $220 because the money from Medicare is not as much. So you're saying canvas whatever county and go wherever the well people are. You can go wherever you like to see your doctor. <laughs> it's where you live. Perhaps it's where you live. Yeah. <laughs> Will the cost of medical um, Medicare Part B change in 2020? I've got crystal balls in the world. <laughs> um, the lady asked, Will Part B change? So, so this. Medicare deductibles, the A and the B deductibles, and, and the Medicare premium is always subject to change the first of the year. Um, unfortunately, all of uh, we have to make our changes sometimes not knowing what Medicare is doing themselves, especially if it's an election year. So if there is a cost of living increase at the end of the year, they generally give us with one hand, Take us with the other. Shakespeare. Yeah. And so that's when you'll expect to see the 135. The 80%, 80% is never changing. You might see the deductibles go up a little bit. And that's when any of these plans, plans would make a change would be generated first. All right. If there's no more questions, if anyone has a private question, you don't see me afterwards and or email me or whatever. Um, I'm in the neighborhood all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.